I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I cannot be defeated and I will not quit. Welcome to Rhema Praise, a worldwide broadcast bringing hope, help, and healing for over 25 years from Kenneth Hagen Ministries and Rhema Bible Church in Broken Arrow, Oklahoma. And now, here are your hosts, Pastors Kenneth and Lynette Hagen. Hello and welcome to Rhema Praise. We are so glad that you've tuned in today. Honey, today you are talking about putting yourself into a position to succeed. You know, we all want to succeed in right. life. Yeah. But it's having information that you have that you have to apply that knowledge that you gain or information mm -hmm. so that you can discipline yourself to do what is necessary to succeed. You know, honey, some people, they want to succeed, but they don't want to put the work into it right. that you have to put into it to succeed. You know, a lot of people want to have a successful Christian life. Well, if you're going to have a successful Christian life, it, you have to discipline yourself to pray, to read the Word of God, mm -hmm. to go to church. Yes. And then, you know, it's important to build relationship with other believers. Absolutely. Because we nobody succeeds alone. No. Everybody that is successful has people in their lives. I mean, I stand yes. on the shoulders of two men, my father, Kenneth E. Hagen, and your dad, my mm -hmm. father-in-law, V.E. Tipton. Those are the two men that, that I stand on those shoulders. My success comes from learning from them. You were willing to listen. Listen to them. You know, and to take their advice. Right. And to learn. And something that I have told my kids and my grandkids, and I tell everybody this, my dad told me this. He taught me this. He said, son, if it's worth doing, it's worth doing right or don't do it at all. Yes. So don't hap you can't haphazardly live in the natural or the spiritual That's side right. and be successful. That's right. You have to be you have to put yourself in the position to be successful with knowledge and yes. wisdom and then you can have the knowledge and wisdom and you don't discipline yourself. Absolutely. To do what your knowledge and wisdom tells you. That's right. You still won't be a success. So That's let's right. go right now where I'm talking about putting yourself into a position to succeed. I, I'm going to call this put yourself in a position to succeed. Colossians 1.12 Colossians 1.12 giving thanks to the Father who has qualified us to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light. I want to read that from the NIV, okay? Giving thanks to the Father who has qualified you to share in the inheritance of the saints in the kingdom of light. You know, when you mention the word success in the natural or the spiritual, I'm sure many people can come to your minds in the natural. It would be sports people, sometimes political people, sometimes a business person. In the natural, I mean in the spiritual, you can think of many, many great men and women of God that were successful. Now, I'll let you think of yours. I'll think of mine. Each one of it, everybody has different people that they look at as successful for several different reasons. But now I want to look at things that I believe that will help you both spiritually and naturally to be success, be a success. You know, I guess I learned a lot from my dad about being successful. He used to tell me, he'd say, son, you've heard me say it before. And he said, this doesn't have to, this, ha this doesn't necessarily have to do with spiritual. It has to do with natural. Whatever is worth, if it's worth doing, it's worth doing right or don't do it at all. I said, well, I can understand how that can apply in the natural, but what about the spiritual? He said, there are a lot of people just pick the Bible up and read it because 
they, and they hurry through it because they got to do their duty and read the Bible. He said, they might as well not even read it. Don't look at me like that. That's the truth. Just to pick the Bible up and quickly read it so you can say, oh, I did my Bible reading. Actually, that's not, that's not doing you any good. Now, some people say, well, I disagree with that. Well, that's fine. You can disagree all you want to. You, got, you can have your own opinion. But I'm telling you the truth. <laughs> uh, that's one thing you got to learn about pastor. I just tell it like it is. Some people have known me for a long time. How long you know me, Jay? You, been, you came to Bible school? <laughs> Before that. But when did you come to Bible school? 2002. When did you come down to go to Bible school? 80. Yeah. 1982. Bill. 1985. Now there's several different t periods of time of these people. These people have known me and they can tell you that I don't, I don't mince words. <laughs> I just tell it like it is. Is that, is that right, guys? <laughs> you know, too many times when people are talking, you're hearing them, and when they finish, you don't know whether they said that it, that was something good to do or not to do. They were so diplomatic. Well, there's sometimes that you need, might need to be diplomatic. I don't know. My, my daughter tells me that I'm a little too hard sometimes, but, you know, but uh, hey, when I get through, nobody has to wonder what I said. <laughs> you know, I've noticed the same with God. When you read it, you don't have to wonder what he said. Now, there's a lot of people that because they don't want to accept it, they put their own interpretation on it. But God said it, and he meant what he said, and said what he meant. That's it. Hello. Now, let's look at Colossians 1, 1 and 2 for just a minute. Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ by the will of God, and Timothy, our brother, to the saints and faithful brethren in Christ who are in Colossae, grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, he is just telling them that they're faithful brothers in Christ and grace to you and peace from our God, Father, and Lord Jesus Christ. Now, in that same chapter in verses 7, and, at verse 7 he says, as you have learned from Epaphroditus, our dear fellow and saints, who is a faithful minister in Christ on your behalf. Now he is talking here to these people about a relationship. He said, Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ by the will of God, and Timothy, our brother, to you at the saints. That's a, he's, he's, he's speaking to them because he has a relationship with them. Now I want, I want you to talk, he, he's talking about relationships. Really to be successful, Christian wise and natural wise, relationships are vitally important. Come on now. Relationships are vitally important. I've been around a long time. I know lots of people and have lots of contacts. And uh, you see, there have been many times when they've come to me and they said, well, it's, uh, this, we, can't, we can't get this done. Well, I happen to know somebody higher up because I had a relationship with them. I could go to them and we could get the thing done. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Any of you ever done that? Yeah. Relationships are important. You know, we as a ministry have had a banking relationship with a bank for a long time. 
A long time. Well, if I need something, I have a relationship with the president of the bank. I, if I had, I got his, I got his personal cell number. I'd just call him. Why? Because I have a relationship. Relationships with people is vitally important. I have, there are certain people that I'm friends with, that I text with daily, that I have a relationship with. If I told them, I needed them to come and help me or they needed me to come and help them, I would be there or they would be here. How many of you have relationships with that with somebody? Those are important. But we, we, we understand the relationship is important, but it's all also with God, but with the people of God. That's why it's important to be a part of a local body. Build relationships. We don't succeed alone. Edmund Hillary says, it's clear that you've never been to the top because if you had no, if you had you know that you never get there alone. We need people that will speak into our lives, make investments in us. That's what God has done with the Word of God. It speaks into our lives. It makes investments. And I'm going to tell you what, you can say, take the principles in the Word and use the same principles in the natural. They work. Hello. You ever read any of the books on uh, positive thinking and, and positive speaking? Where do you think they... Norman Vincent Peale was the one that wrote it first. Where do you think he got it from? The Bible. Hello. You see... We need people who care about us. We need people who will interact with us. We need people who can be an example to us. We need people who will minister to us. We need each other, especially in the spiritual area. That's why he said, don't forsake the assembling of yourself together. There's something about the coming together as a unit and as a body. There's something there. You know? You may not really realize it, but your life and my life are built on the contributions that others have put into us. I stand here tonight on the shoulders of two men. My father, Kenneth E. Hagan, and my father-in-law, B.E. Tipton. Those men put things into me naturally and spiritually that helps me to be where I am today. I had another individual one time tell me, when you're making a decision, put it out here in the middle of the table, punch it full of holes, look at, look at it every way it can be looked at, and once you make the decision, make sure you're willing to live with the consequences of that decision. If people would think like that naturally and spiritually, before they make a decision, it, they'd stay out of a lot of trouble. Come on now, think about that. That's something that I, I was told years ago. I still think about that. You see, 
In Colossians 1, 3 and 4, we give thanks to God our Father, our Lord Jesus Christ, praying always for you, since we heard of your faith in Christ Jesus and your love for all the saints. Now I want you to notice here, he is talking to them and telling them that he's praying for them. See, what he's doing here, praying and so forth, these are contributions. Those that love you, those that pray for you. That's what he's saying here. Paul's saying this. Now, I'm going to say this. Be careful choosing your friends. You just don't always have to have somebody that agrees with everything you say and everything you do. You need some people that are willing to tell you the truth and challenge you. Hello. You know, I have talked to lots of people and some of my friends even and I have they think they they said well I'm going to we're thinking about doing this. We my wife and I have even talked with ministers that think about leaving the church. And we challenged them. We we knew them that well. We had a relationship. You can't you can't do that if you don't have a relationship with somebody. And because they were fixing to make a mistake. And many times if you have friends that and you're fixing to do something and they can show you some pitfalls here, that's helpful. Hello, you might not like it. And it might be not what you want to hear, but it sure could keep you out of a lot of trouble. Hello. Let's look at Colossians 1, 9. For this reason, we also, since that day, heard it, do not cease to pray for you and to ask that you may be filled with the knowledge of the will, his will, in all wisdom and spiritual understanding, and that you may walk worthy of the Lord, fully pleasing him, being fruitful in every good work, and in the knowledge of God. Now here, Paul is talking about or engaging, maybe I should say, in transformation. Now, you see, so many times people want God to make them feel better, but God wants to make you better. Hello. You know, you can receive information and still not be transformed. You have to take the information and begin to do something with it before you be, become transformed. Hello. I, I, I think there is a cycle here, a cycle in this transformation in this scripture right here. Look at this. Okay, first of all, let's look at the key to transfer, the key to transfer. Knowledge, okay, what is knowledge? Knowledge, education, information. Wisdom is application of knowledge. Understanding is taking the necessary steps to change or to transform. He talked about all three of those in that scripture I just read. Hello. The results of transformation in the natural is knowledge. You can't change yourself or anything else until you have knowledge of, of it. And then if you don't use wisdom to make it come alive, then nothing happens. Hello. 
Now, then it's understanding those principles from that knowledge that you gain and put them into practice that makes you a success. You see, you can know what the Bible says. You can even, somebody can even have given you the wisdom to how to do it. But until you actually take all of that and put it into action, nothing happens. It's one thing to know something. It's another thing to make it happen. Success comes from all of those. I know if you listen to what I had to say, you can put yourself in a position to succeed both naturally and in the spiritual area. You know, coming back, and, and I, I was in I, I was in a lot of athletics. I played a lot. Yes. You, you've said, well, I played a lot of men's fast pitch softball back in the day and then even slow pitch and flag football and basketball and I, I, all the way back into my high school years. And if you're going to be successful, you had, you had to do something to put yourself yes. in the position to be on the team and not just sitting on the bench. That's right. Be out there playing. And it took a lot of hard work. Absolutely. And to be successful in the natural, it takes work. To be successful spiritually, it takes work. Reading the Word, going to church, you know, <laughs> praying, all That's of those right. things. So I want to encourage you, do whatever it takes to yes. be successful in both areas. Actually, you're not a success until you're a success in both areas, spiritually and naturally. You know, I, of course, I've been to church all, well, we've both been to church all of our, our lives. lives. And I know our grandkids say, you don't tell Nana that you're not going to church because <laughs> if the kids are not here, I text them, you know, because in order to be, that's how you hear from God. Yes. One of the ways you hear from God. Yes. And then I know another thing people will say, well, um, pray for such and such for me because I know God answers your prayers. Well, the reason he answers my prayers is because I talk to him every day. Have a relationship with him. I have a relationship him. with him. I talk to him every day. And so you have to discipline yourself uh, to talk to the Lord And somebody every day. said, how do you talk to the Lord? Through prayer. That's right. Through That's prayer. right. So that could be another sermon, oh, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah. you know what? The offer that we have, honey, will certainly also help you uh, to be a success right. in life. Right. Yeah. Um, your book, I want to get this first, Avoiding the Trap of Being Offended. You know, you can't be successful if you're continually being offended. Yeah, or holding a grudge. Or holding a grudge. Yeah, holding a grudge against somebody. Right. And then another, my uh, CD, using stumbling blocks as stepping stones. So many times we're not successful because something knocks us down and we say, oh, poor old me. We yeah. have a pity party. Right. Well, you know, I don't have pity parties. I, in fact, I, it makes me mad at the devil. So I said, I'm going to walk all over you, devil, and I'm going to show you that I can accomplish this because with God, I can do all things. That's so right. I do what I say. I get my stubborn on. Yeah, yeah. And it's okay to be stubborn with the devil. And then your uh, dad's, uh, I guess this is a DVD, right? Uh, oh. This is the day. Yeah. And uh, yes, and it's a sermon on, hey, today is the day. Yeah. There's never a tomorrow. And that's all for today. a gift of $30 or more, and that is a really good deal. That's go right. to your Go to your device right now, your computer, laptop, iPad, yes. phone, whatever you got, and order. Go to rhema.org 
and order it right now. That's right. Well, registration is still open for Rainbow Bible Training College. It closes this week, so apply by August the 15th. Go to, Rainbow, uh, go to rbtc.org yes. slash apply. That's right. Conferences. We're a week away yeah. uh, from our conference, Living Faith Conference in Newton, Connecticut. That's at Grace Family Church. That's August the 20th through the 22nd. Pastor Adam Fredericks. And then we're, then gonna we're going over, over to, to Spring, Spring Hills, Hill, Pennsylvania. Yeah, August 23 through 25. Faith is Alive Fellowship. Pastors Chris and Irene Korn. And you can get all the details at rhema.org. That's right. And then in September, September the 10th through the 12th, we are going to be a Living Faith Conference in Longview, Texas at the Remnant Church. That is Pastors Rusty and Anna Brady. And, and what else is happening in September? Oh, my. An exciting time. Kindle the Flame yeah. Women's Conference. Yeah, yours and Denise's That's Women's right. Conference. That's right. That's September the 28th through the 30th. That's the time that you just leave us alone. Uh, uh, get out of the way. That's right, because <laughs> when the ladies come, oh my goodness, do we have an awesome, awesome time in the Lord as well as fellowship time. So registration is now open. So register at rhema.org slash KTF. Well, you hear me say all, all the time, thank you for helping us bring hope, help, and healing to the world. Well, we have word partners and a word partner is a person that prays for us regularly yes. and then sends an offering at least once a month, whatever they can afford to help us to keep Rama going. It helps pay the, tu the tuition for... Uh, part of the tuition. Part of the tuition. We keep our tuition low, low at Rama Bible For the Rama Bible Training yes. Center. It helps us to travel all over and do these conferences and go all over. It helps us to stay on television. <laughs> Basically, it helps yes. us really to stay right here coming on your, on your TV. Yes. So that when we say thank you for helping us to bring hope, hope help, help, and, and healing, healing to, the to the world, world, that's what we're thanking you for. God bless you. If you're going to be a success in life, the road is going to be rocky and bumpy. But instead of stumbling blocks, those are going to be stepping stones. And I'm going to step higher and higher and higher and higher. Using stumbling blocks as stepping stones, a powerful CD by Lynette Hagan, and a book by Kenneth W. Hagan, Avoiding the Trap of Being Offended. Plus, Kenneth E. Hagan's anointed message on DVD video from Camp Meeting 1998. This is the day. Get all three powerful faith tools today for a gift of only $30 or more when you call toll free 1 888 Praise 8. Or you can log on anytime, day or night, at rhema.org to order. For Canadian orders, log on at rhemacanada.org. Do it today. Thank you for watching Rama Praise with Kenneth and Lynette Hagan. Kenneth, Lynette, and Rama Bible Training College are committed to reaching the entire world with the gospel of Jesus Christ and training laborers for the end time harvest. If you have prayer requests or would like more information about Rama, please call, write, or visit rama.org. Thank you for being with us today and for your faithful support. And remember, there is hope help and healing for a hurting world.